Hey guys, Volan here. I want to talk to you today about skills. This is easily one of the most important things in art and is yet another thing that I just completely missed out on when I was starting out. I had no idea about really how to distinguish between knowledge of something, theory, and doing something, get it, getting better at something. I'd gone through a whole bunch of school before that. I'd gone through university, I'd gone through school, just writing things primarily, just getting told to read something, reading it, writing a paper, remembering it for a couple days, and then just completely forgetting it forever. And this was the mode of learning that I was really used to. So when I wanted to start drawing, really what I did is I got a bunch of books on drawing, just theory and different methods, just anything I could get from the library, from the university library. I got all those and I started going through them. And as you might guess, my drawing didn't improve at all because I was spending more time reading about drawing and I wasn't really doing much. I wasn't practicing. I wasn't training it. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are in the same position and that's why we're going to talk about this today. I think it's very difficult first when you are when you're used to school learning and when you get told that you know something and in fact what you know about that thing what you know of it is just you have memorized a bunch of facts but then someone told someone tells you that you know it and then you get praised for it and you get good grades and then you do this for 12 years or however long you stay in school for then you really develop the mental habit of learning something means that I can talk about it. I can recite a few things about it. I sound clever. I impress myself when I talk about this thing, right? I know a bunch of stuff about it. I read it from a couple of different people. I said this to a guy at school or at work and they were like, oh my God, really? So I really know about this stuff. But there's really a massive difference between knowing of something and actually being something, being a certain way. And really the difference between book learning or school learning and skill building, which is what we need for art, is the difference between reading a book on exercising, let's say, and actually going to the gym and working out. Reading a book is great. I'm not, this is definitely, I'm not saying that you should be doing constantly and never read, no theory, never. That's not what I'm saying. Reading that book may be the most helpful thing because it may give you some info that will then guide your entire process. But if you're not putting in the work, if you are not 90% working, most of the time, there's a time for everything. There's a time for imbalance and mostly going into theory and tweaking things and what did I miss? But really that's really for me is once you're in hardcore practice mode is when you can get time off from that and really think about the process and really tweak it, really improve it. Get some new knowledge that will help and multiply what it is that you do. When you're just first time going to the gym or getting started with drawing, you should be spending about 90% of your time in just work, in practice. Sleeves rolled up, digging ditches. Not reading about how to dig the best ditch, not reading what tool is the best to use or what method is the best. No man, just get out there and get to work. Now school learning or book learning, as we mentioned, is about 0.1% or even less than what's required to build a skill. It's essentially you know about something and you know facts about it, but you don't, you haven't encoded that into your brain in a way that essentially becomes a part of you. A lot of people who are great at what they do can't necessarily even speak about what it is that they do. They can't tell you why they chose to do this stroke or that or why, or why they picked that line or how they made it. They can't tell you any of those things. They can't tell you about the decision necessarily because there may not have been a decision that was made. They are most likely, if they are highly skilled, they're working from parts of their brain that are non-verbal. They've encoded the information so deeply and not only the information, but they have practiced that information and converted it into actual practical skill. And they have practiced that so many times, they've done it so many times that it has been offloaded from their conscious brain into their subconscious or reptilian brain. And those parts of the brain are a lot faster. They are also a lot less expensive to run, which is why when you get good at something, the one thing that I found every time that I felt that I've improved in art is I felt like I can just think about other things now. I don't have to worry about where I'm putting that line or how dark or light something is or any of those more basic problems. I can now just think about 
Is this telling my story? Is this moving me towards that image that I want? I can think about bigger picture things rather than just constantly being stuck in the most mundane, minute detail of just how do I do this? And instead of that, I can think about what am I doing? Why am I doing it? One thing that's very tricky about skills is just realizing how many things are skills. It's easy to think about something like making a straight line or making a perfect circle or something like a physical thing is easy to understand the skill, like hitting a ball, you know, like playing tennis or something like that. That's easy to think of as a skill. But really, something like, let's say, in art anatomy or perspective, these things are part knowledge, but then they also, they need to get converted into skill. And I guess one thing that's really important here, I, I keep saying skill and I need to define what it, what it is. I think when we say the word, we kind of all have a collective understanding of what it is, but even looking for a definition, it's not too clear. To me, skill means a behavior that you choose to cultivate, that you train, and you become very efficient at. And I say behavior because really making lines is a behavior, making a circle is a behavior, but really skills are also, there are things that we think of sometimes as characteristics of ourselves. Getting to work on time, and I mean like getting to your practice and not procrastinating, not avoiding it because it's difficult, that is a mental skill. A lot of the things that we think that we are, if I say that, let's say I'm lazy or I find it hard to be around people, maybe I'm shy, maybe I'm not confident, all of those things are actually, in a way, their behavior that can be modified. So I would classify that as skills. And why I wanna lump all the stuff together is because I want you to understand that these things that we're talking about here, they're not just art. I mean, the video series that we made, mindset, practice and projects and skills, this isn't just how to make pictures. This is essentially anything in life, anything that's difficult that you haven't done before, that is a long, arduous testing process. These are the things to pull you through that. Art just happens to be the thing that we're all engaged in here, that we all have in common. But those are the skills to get skills, yeah? Those are the tools to get anything done. I think skills and habit in the brain, I'm not too sure about the science of this stuff, so I'm just lumping things together that contextually make sense, but skills and habits are very similar. In fact, it may be easier to actually talk about this stuff almost as mental habits. So a skill could be a very effective and efficient mental habit that you've developed. So we took perspective and anatomy as examples of something that's knowledge, but that needs to be trained as a skill. So that knowledge needs to be trained as a skill or needs to be gone over, gone through so many times and drawn so many times from reference and from memory until really you habituate these things, you train the knowledge as a skill and it goes into your reptilian brain, into your subconscious brain, because what happens then is you get chunking which means that you are not necessarily thinking about each individual piece anymore. They get tangled thematically, but they also, you start a chain reaction now where when you draw one thing, your brain has the habit of what come next. You have a pattern now. And the brain is essentially a pattern recognition and I suppose creation machine. Your brain is constantly scanning for patterns. And you can tie out a whole bunch of things together that don't make sense, right? Like these words that I'm saying, they're just sounds. They're just sounds that we recognize because we speak the same language. Someone watching this video that doesn't understand English or is like two months old, watching this makes no sense to them. Maybe it doesn't make sense to a lot of our other people too. But if you take anatomy and you've studied the muscles, you know where they are, you know where they attach, and you've drawn them from the model and you understand, and then you start training them, meaning that you know what's supposed to happen, you know how things are supposed to attach, you don't have reference, and then you try and just recreate what happens. And then you realize how much there is that you don't know. And then you do it again, and you do it again. And each and every time you make another pass, you fill up some more holes that you have in your knowledge. And you are making your brain more efficient at those patterns, those anatomy patterns. So then when you're drawing, and then something isn't on the model, let's say, and you wanna modify something, or you wanna do it from imagination, now we're getting to the point where you can actually make creative changes because your brain has automated the pattern. It knows what normally goes with what. So then you can make changes as you want them to be. Another example is perspective. So for instance, you learn the theory of perspective. Let's say that it takes a week or it takes a month. Let's say that we're thorough. So for basic picture making, we don't need much theory. And let's say you understand the theory fairly well within a month. Well, now that theory really is just it's 
not functioning. What you need to do now is you need to start training that theory in the same way that we talked about with the anatomy. You need to start training that theory. So you put yourself in many, many hundreds of different situations. Okay, two point perspective, something's above. Three point perspective, I'm looking above or I'm looking down or rotation like this, rotation like that. What would it look like? Three quarters, tilted, all kinds of different things. You put yourself in those situations, meaning you take your piece of paper and you draw it out and you do it very slowly and then you do it again and then you do it you put yourself in all of these various scenarios and as you explore them as you do this over and over and over you're training these situations you're habituating your brain to recognizing the patterns of this type of perspective this type of tilt all of these different things are becoming more familiar they're getting chunked and after enough time and enough repetition your brain now has prefabricated ready answers, ready to go, so that you can think about not perspective, but what it is that you're doing. So let's just quickly cover skill building. Just why exactly does it work and why are we doing these things and how are we doing it even more importantly. So skill in your brain is essentially when you're doing anything new, your brain starts to form a pattern for what this action is that you're performing. This pattern in your brain is a bunch of neural circuits. Now, the more that you fire those neural circuits, the more that you are repeating the same pattern, you're looking at the anatomy again and again and again, the same angles, the same structure, all of these things that you're training. The more that you're looking at them, the more that you're firing that same circuit. This is very similar to training in the gym. Firing that circuit is kind of like doing a repetition. The more that you fire the circuit, the more your brain starts to insulate it, to make it faster. This is done via a thing called myelin. And myelin is essentially an insulation that goes around the sheath. It makes sure that the circuit is more efficient, that the impulse travels faster and is stronger. So this is essentially when you're training a skill, what you're doing is you're changing your brain. That's really what we're always doing. That's, that's what this game of art is. Is Art is a series of hundreds, hundreds of tiny little skills. And why you need to train is because really you're conscious brain, your prefrontal cortex is only good at doing one thing at a time. It's very linear, very sequential. So it can do all the most creative, most highly evolved functions of the brain, but at the same time, it's very expensive to run and it can only do one thing at a time. So that's why we need to train these things that we want to get faster and better at. And training is essentially you're getting the prefrontal cortex to look at stuff. But with enough repetition, you start offloading from the prefrontal cortex to the basal ganglia, to the reptilian brain. You start transferring info so that you don't have to constantly be examining what you're doing. It, that stuff gets done by the lower parts of the brain now. What's most important from all this stuff to get is that anytime that you're practicing something, you're essentially making changes to your brain. So you have to be very deliberate with what it is that you're doing. There's a way to practice and mechanical practice, just doing the same thing over and over, grinding, doesn't really get you anywhere. Because what's required for change? To change your brain, you need to adapt your brain to something new. To do that, you need to be conscious of what it is that you're doing. You need to be there. You need to have a focused, targeted goal, even if it's small, it doesn't really matter, but you need to have something that you're working towards in that session of improvement and that you're training for. So with the example, again, of making straight lines, it's not about doing 10 billion straight lines. That may not get you better at all, but it's about making the line and then checking, did this do what I wanted to do? Because you're training your brain to produce a better response, a better pattern. So that all, if you, all you're doing is you're just moving your hand, you're not doing anything. You're not training your, you're not showing your brain how to get better. So when you're training your brain, you need to show it. How do we get better brain? So you do a line, it's horrible. It's Diagonal, you want it to be straight. Okay, let's do it again. Let's maybe put two points. Let's go from point to point. How did that go? Let's do it again. Each and every time, small little refinements. And you need to go slowly. There were a couple comments from a long while ago that I've been trying to answer, saying that I think I'm taking too long. I It takes me 40 minutes to do something that I've seen someone do in five minutes. I should be going faster. And really doing that is a surefire way to not improve at all. Because speed comes not with the rapidity of how quickly you go with your hand, no one really draws fast because they go fast. Why they draw fast is because they've encoded a very good pattern of what it is that they want to do and they know exactly how to get there. So they go slowly, but they go with deliberate intent and they just don't have to go back and correct. Glenn Vilpo is a great example of that from New Masters Academy. He draws slowly, 
He talks about what it is that he's doing. He's analyzing it. And just like a carpenter, like how Andrew Loomis describes it in some of his books, it's just carpenter work from that stage. Just the technical side becomes just carpenter work. You know what you're doing and you're just like an efficient craftsman just getting it done. All right, final thing before we wrap up, because there's just never enough time in a video to cram everything in. And I'm probably still missing some things that I really, really want to get in here, but it's just not going to happen. If you think that you're not good at something or that something feels unnatural, it just feels too clunky. I don't know about this. Maybe I shouldn't be doing it. Maybe it's not meant for me. If you think about, let's say, drawing in that way, if you think that, well, you know, I, I was looking at this thing and, you know, the guy or the girl, it was just so like they weren't really thinking about it. They were just doing it somehow and it was just so nice and it just doesn't happen that way. A lot of people that seem to be very talented or are able to do something that just seems impossible to us, like Michael Jordan flying through the air or an athlete that you see doing something insane, those same people at some point were completely unskilled and untrained. The people that seem very talented, the ones that can't really explain what it is that they do, I think just acquired a whole bunch of skill early on before they even had a verbal ability to analyze what it is that they're doing. And so they were just doing it for so long, they can't even explain what it is that they're doing. But if you think that something feels uncomfortable and it's always gonna be uncomfortable and it's always gonna be clunky, just think about the fact that at some point you couldn't really speak, you didn't have language. And now you can fire away hundreds of words a minute or a second for some people, and you can do that all day long. And also walking, at some point you couldn't walk, I bet. And now you can do that while you're talking without even thinking about walking or talking. So you've become a master at both of those things. You've become skilled at them, essentially. So training and building skill essentially takes something that is foreign to you. And through practice, through a lot of deliberate, mindful repetition, you encode this thing so deeply. And that's why it's so different to school learning, because you're not just memorizing it. You're not memorized. It doesn't even matter actually if you remember the definition. You're doing this thing and you're repeating it so many times. And I keep stressing repeating because you need to do certain things thousands of times before you encode them well. And there's a constant layering process. Like you don't just get to be from zero to a hundred at something and then move on. You're constantly enmeshing things together because art is a very complex skill made of hundreds of little micro subskills, if not even thousands. And they need to mesh together. So that's why you're constantly training one thing and then combining it with another and then combining it, that whole thing with another thing and then seeing how things fit together, testing new ways of doing things. You're essentially integrating those things into your brain, into your being, to the point where you can't really make a distinction at some point between what you know, what you don't know, what's easy, what's hard. That's what's called the curse of knowledge. When someone becomes so good, they can't relate to a beginner anymore because they just can't remember what it feels like to not be able to do that thing. And if this didn't happen all the time, then we wouldn't even have a word for it. So if you're wondering if you can get better, if you can improve, you've already acquired many, many skills. You've already mastered hundreds of tiny little skills, just a day out, just a day of going outside which side of the street do you go on? Which way do you look when there's cars? How do you speak to people? What do you do? How do you behave when this, that, or that happens? These are all skills. All of these are things that you didn't know at some point. You then were told the information, then you practiced them, you saw them in action, and you did them over and over and over until they became natural. This is what humans have been doing since there have been humans. So if you want something, it really is all about work because you have the hardware, you have the equipment necessary. All right, let's do a quick recap here. Building skills is incredibly important in art because art is essentially a very, very complicated skill or a very complex process. It has all kinds of moving parts, all kinds of little skills that need to fit together. And the only way to be able to think of so many things at once is really to not have to think about them. Since your prefrontal cortex, your conscious brain can only think of one thing at a time, then really what we need to do is we need to get all those tiny little technical things trained so that we don't have to think about them. We need to get them offloaded into the reptilian brain, which is much, much faster, much less expensive. And really that's what gives us the feel of what to do next. Like when you get a hint of, hey, you know what? This is a little bit off. I'm not sure exactly. And then you move the eye, you move the nose, whatever it is that you, you change the color a little bit and then it just works, right? You can only get that feel when you've looked at hundreds and hundreds of 
different scenarios, different patterns of things. And then your brain is just like, hey, stupid, it's over here. But your conscious brain, since you can only do one thing, it's very slow to get those things. So sometimes you just get a feel for something. It'll be nudging you in the right direction. For me, I draw very much now how I used to draw, let's say five or six years ago. The only difference is I get a better result. And the reason why I get a better result is that just I've trained it so much more that my ability to let's say look at shape and to assess it more correctly and to look at proportions and to make it a bit better these things are just trained so i still when i was starting out i would try and do a looser drawing without too much measuring without too much fussing over this or that and it would just fail each and every time now i draw in a way that i thought i should draw then that's how i draw now too and i'll just end up with a better result just because i've trained it so much but the way to get there was to actually do all the laborious measuring because you're training micro skills then, you're training shape perception, you're training recognition of distances. All these different things are skills and it's incredibly important to recognize them as such. Because when you're able to point to something and say, hey, I need to train recognizing shapes a bit better. I need to train recognizing values more correctly. I need to train making shapes more accurately. When you start being able to pinpoint things, that is when you can really take control of your learning and start getting better. Now, you're the architect of your skills. You're the architect of your brain. So each and every time that you're training something, you need to go slowly and deliberately. Because if you're just doing a whole bunch of stuff, it doesn't mean that you're actually doing anything useful. Carrying bricks from one part of the house to another part of the house doesn't get the house built, it, but it's still a lot of work, right? It's still very busy, but it doesn't really do anything. So each and every training session, you're in charge. And you're in charge of making sure that that skill gets improved. And the way to improve that skill is very simple. It's just, what am I getting wrong right now? What is it that I need to do then? Okay, let me try it. Well, that sucked, but I could have done this a little bit better and it would have been better. And you do it again. Okay, this was a little bit better. Now let me try it again and let me try it again and let me try it again and refine it. Okay, cool. Am I consistently getting it better? Good. Then we're getting the skill in place and we're getting it done correctly. We're myelinating, right? We're building the skill set. We're building the circuit. Never forget that these things that you're doing, you're essentially making changes to your brain. And I say that because when we're training, when we're doing art, there's just, there's nothing left at the end of the session. Like you don't get to see that your brain has just changed. If you're going to the gym, you can at least see your body changed, but there's nothing here. You don't get like a second head when you get really good. So you need to constantly remind yourself that even though you can't see it, it's in there, it's happening and you're in charge. If your improvement isn't going the way that you would like it to go, it's not because you're incapable. It's purely down to the process that you're using to study. That's it. You have the same machinery that we all share. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. I can go on for days on this thing. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know. We're going to be best friends. If you like the video, if this helped you with something, please make sure to like it. And that way you're supporting the channel. Please subscribe also. That way I know that you are liking the content, that you want to see more of these things called videos, I guess. New Masters Academy also have a special offer for you guys, 15% off. Go to checkout, type in Volen CK, all one word, and you get 15% off. This is essentially what I used to learn to draw for over a year, and I still use their stuff daily. I use their reference all the time, and I still keep looking at Glenn Vilpu, Steve Houston, Bill Perkins I'm doing right now, some composition stuff, but drawing, composition, anatomy, all that stuff from masters with decades of experience, so that's a no-brainer for me. And you'll get 15% off your entire subscription, not just the month, but each and every month you get 15% off. All right, homework. I would like you to think about if you're more of a theorist or if you're a grinder. Are you someone that's constantly consuming information? Are you a book learner? Are you like me when I was starting out? Are you constantly reading about stuff and watching tutorials 24 seven, but rarely getting to work? And if you are, I would like you to think about some of these things that we talked about in the video myelination, adaptation. These things, you build skill based on adaptation. That means that you must have something to adapt to and then you need to start making incremental little changes that get you there. So I would like you to implement more practice into your routine. Now, if you're a grinder on the other hand and you're just mechanically practicing and doing nothing but just over and over and over, same thing, I would like you to start being more deliberate as well. I would like you to start if you're training for long periods of time, I would like you to start taking smaller sessions and having very specific goals of what you want to do. And I want you to be there doing that thing, 
not listening to crazy music, not speaking to 15 friends, not being on Skype and on Facebook and having YouTube and all that stuff. Take less time, but be more focused with what you do because you will get faster improvements even with less time, which is great. You get more time to do some of those other things, but after, not during practice. Okay, let me know how this applies to you. Let me know what you got from the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you around.